congratulations, first of all, on all of your success. And I have to know, I mean, what has it been like to see this amazing creation of yours come to life? Overwhelming. <laughs> Surreal. Um, the, you know, the billboards are everywhere. It's every relative we've ever had, every person we've ever met, our second grade boyfriends have been calling us. Every, every day I get texts from people or Facebook messages with new pictures from where they've seen the billboards or the ads or a magazine somewhere. It's, I mean, it's really exciting. What was it like for you to be on set though and watch these characters that you created from your minds come to life? Though that has to be Richard pretty weird. did such an amazing job, Richard Lagravenis, of the detail that's involved in our particular production that it literally felt like he had crawled in our head when we were sleeping and like rifled around. Every, I mean, don't you feel like every single set, every costume oh, yeah. felt like it was right out of our imagination? Jeffrey Curlin, the costume designer, his workshop was like <laughs> Santa's North Pole. I mean, he had dressed characters that only exist in our book on like a family tree. And it was unbelievable. But really, it was a surreal experience. And there's this particular sort of famous moment that we walked on set with our editor and there was Jeremy Irons, dressed like Macon, speaking the first line of the book, and she just burst into tears, which is pretty much what we all felt like. I think it was just like, we almost couldn't process that. Well, let's go back a few years, because I want to know where the idea came from. <laughs> from, to, you know, I had read somewhere that someone dared you, or some teenagers had dared you to write this, or um, how did it all evolve? Margie and I met um, when I was a teacher. I was a teacher for 17 years, and I taught all three of her daughters, but when I uh, taught her oldest daughter, I think they were in, weren't they in middle school when, when she dared us? We, I was teaching a book group and they were talking about kind of the things that they wished there was more of, you know, they were kind of tired of this and that and like, why doesn't anyone do this? And I, so I'm talking to Margie about it and um, she's like, we could do that. And yeah. we're, we're, we, had, we had specific instructions from them. They said, we don't want a vampire. We're done with vampires because they love Twilight and they didn't want someone to be that again. They said, um, we want the boy to tell the story. We're tired of the girl always telling the story. We want the girl to be able to do something besides just fall in love. We want the girl to be the magical, powerful person. And we don't want it to feel generic like everything else. We want it to be in a specific place. They wanted like the setting almost to be a character. Mm -hmm. So we were at you know, El Cholo, this Mexican restaurant, and we're drinking Diet Coke and writing down on napkins and like this, you know, Margie was like, you know, that, that's not that hard. You know, you create supernaturals and we talk about what would they be like and we hatched this whole plan and she goes back to her house and she tells her oldest daughter who was now in what, like ninth grade. She says, uh, Mrs. Garcia and I are gonna write a book. And her daughter says, uh, yeah, right, whatever. And she's like, no, no, it's, a, it's an amazing idea. You wanna hear about it? And she's like, mom, you might say you're gonna write a book, and for like two days maybe you're gonna write a book, but then you won't because you never finish anything. I said, oh, it's on. And so Margie called me and she's like, you know that thing we were talking about at lunch that we totally weren't gonna do? Now we're doing it. And I was like, okay. It took 12 weeks. We ended up with 600 pages. We wrote it like serialized fiction, a few chapters at a time. The questions they asked about what happened next changed what happened next. They'd say, where's Link? Where's Ridley? She's so bad. And I'd be like, stay right there. <laughs> And then there it would be. And so, it moved virally through several high schools. And Margie and I had no intention of publishing this. This was a story we were writing for my sister, who was a teenager, her daughters, and you know their friends, your seven students. kids, yeah. and yeah, all my students. So at the end, um, we were we got together, and Margie's like, you know, we could build a website. We're so creative, and we were literally going to build a website and put it up on fr for free online. And she called uh, her oldest friend, Pseudonymous Bosch, who writes uh, the Secret Series. He's a published middle grade author. And he had read it and told her, told him this amazing plan we had. And he said, um, you two are, are idiots. Don't do that. And then Those he sent it to his agent words. without telling us in New York. And suddenly we had an agent. And then you know, the book was going to be option, uh, auctioned. And then Richard found it. It was very crazy. Yeah, yeah now four books later, look where you are. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty, pretty amazing. So what do your kids say now? <laughs> oh, people ask me that all the time. They say, do your kids finally think you're cool? And I say usually to the audience, does anyone who have children want to answer that question? Because the answer is no, 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 no. And that's their job. I mean, they do it really well. The book's in 48 countries. It was an instant New York Times bestseller. It's, you know, uh, it was Amazon's am number one uh, teen pick on their editors, you know, list and number five on their top 100 for adults Yeah, it overall. just rolled. It was like a snowball. And all the time our kids were just like, who would want your autograph? 
The okay. worst part though was I was cool because I was their teacher that they loved and I had taught book groups for years, but then like by proxy, I became uncool. Okay, they not... were just like, you wrote a book with our mom. You're totally not cool anymore. Yeah, we don't like you anymore. And I, can, would... I can ruin anything I touch. But we would get dressed like to go to events. We would spend you know a lot of time you know trying to make sure we looked nice to go to our book events and then they'd be like, um, are you guys, when are you changing to go to the book event? And yeah. Mark would be like, well, we're wearing this and they'd be like, oh. But that's why people think it's easier to write for children than adults. It's really not. No. They are the most critical, smartest. You can't get anything past them. So, I mean, actually, we kept my middle schooler home. Cammie came over, and for three days before we turned in our final draft, we didn't let her go to school. She edited out all the cheesy bits, and she would roll her eyes and be like, nobody would say that. That's and then awesome. finally on the third day, she said, Mom, I have to go to school. It's the law. <laughs> And I said, don't be so selfish. And she Get never volunteered there. to do this again for any of the other three books. She was like, you two have an editor. You're on your own. Yeah. That's amazing. That yeah. is. So what's been the most memorable fan experience you've had? I mean, the fans for this are nuts. Like, I'm not nuts to yeah. me, but like nuts for the series. Do um, something that really stands out? I think for me, I always feel like the right book at the right time can save your life. Like, books meant a lot to both of us growing up. And, we, you know, We've had letters from, you know, teens, like, saying, you know, I felt like the biggest loser, like, I have no friends, like, I, like I just want to disappear, I don't even want to go to school, but now I've read the books and I realize I'm just like Lena and yeah. there are people like me and I'm going to be myself and, you know what I mean, like, when you, when, when the books help someone or they connect in that way, yeah. in the way we connected to books, that's the most meaningful thing, especially since some of those letters are coming from other countries. Yeah, I, I had a really particular experience in Kuala Lumpur with, um, with a bunch of girls in burkas yeah. who were in arranged marriages going off mm -hmm. to other countries How old and had not met their, were saving for marriages that of, they, you know, teen, oh, oh, teenagers. And, um, and talking about free will and choice and wanting to claim yourself, which is the essential theme of our book, mm -hmm. wanting to stand up for who you are and be an individual and be yourself, it's just a really interesting thing, you know, when you realize you're dealing with 48 countries, you are not dealing necessarily with a Western reader. It's been fascinating. Amazing, amazing. Well, I could talk to you guys forever. You're fantastic. And thank you for these books. And I think we might have a franchise on our hands, Thank ladies. You. What do you think? Let's I don't know. Hope. We, we hope that as many people enjoy the movie as the books because we think the movie is fantastic. Yeah, it is. It did, he did a great job. Everybody in it is fantastic. Great to talk to you. And, Thank uh, you. Come to Toronto and visit us there. We love Toronto. Yeah. We'd love to. Good. Best okay. in the world. I'll look you up when, when you come. Okay. Thank you. Nice meeting you Bye. both.